Welcome to the tutorial for the career newsletter for College and Career Awareness by Megan Reese. In this video we're going to go through this entire assignment step by step um, so that you can catch up if you missed a day or uh, get some clarification if you're confused. So let's go ahead and get started on this. You're going to open up the newsletter. This is what it looks like when you open up the basic assignment, uh, the starter. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and save it. So you're going to go to File, Save As, and however you save in your, in your lab, go ahead and save the file with your initials um, so that it is your document. And then throughout the rest of the assignment, you can just keep pressing this button or do Control S to continue saving it. It's a good idea to save every couple of minutes. Next, we're going to go to View and make sure that your ruler is on. Okay, so I have my ruler over here and along the top. By the way, if this navigation thing is open, you don't need it, so I'm going to go ahead and close mine. So if yours is open, you can close it. Now I've got mine set with the view so that I'm seeing two pages at a time. It doesn't really matter what your view is. It's just down here with your zoom button. If you want to make it smaller or closer or whatever, you can do that, but um, that's up to you. It doesn't really matter. I like to see both pages, so that's why I have it set that way. All right, then we're going to go ahead and add a footer. So you're going to go to insert and choose footer. Choose the very first one. And it's going to come down here and put it at the bottom of your page. And just go ahead and type your name, a dash, and then whatever your period is. And then click close or double click to get out of it. And now you'll see that this is gray and everything else is black. Whereas when you were inside it, this was black and everything else is gray. And what a footer does is it puts your name on every single page. Now right now this is three pages long. Don't let that bother you. It's sometimes it will be two pages. In the end it will be one page. We Believe it or not, we will fit all of this on one page. Uh, but for now, don't let that, that worry you. Next, we're going to go to Margins. So we're going to go to Page Layout, Margins, and choose Narrow. And now the white space around our edges is much thinner than it was before. Don't miss this step because it can come back to bite you later uh, when your document doesn't fit on one page. Okay, now we're going to do bold, italics, and underline. We're going to do, um, we're going to highlight this area here that we did some research. This whole paragraph, I'm going to go to Home. Make sure you're on a home ribbon. These are all ribbons up here. We're on the home ribbon now, which is the one we use the most. And we're going to click on the I button right here. That's the italics. Okay. And now we're going to try the bold. And by the way, there's a shortcut for italics, which is Control I. So you can do it that way as well. And then we're going to come down here. There's five careers in this first section. Biomedical engineer, we're going to bold that. Brick masons, we're going to bold that. And you're going to do each one. You can also do Control B. That's a shortcut. Um, for that so that all five of them are now bolded. And then the last one is underlined. This one's just a little tricky to find. If you look over here, there are some scholarships over here. And by the way, these are real, real scholarships. I looked them up on Utah Futures. They are real. Um, we're going to go ahead and find the first title of the first one. So Society of Women Engineers. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to underline it. Okay. The next one is Cushman Foundation. And you can control U. That's the shortcut is control U and then life and health formation. One other third way is that when you highlight something, this little thingy comes up. It's just a shortcut, so you can click on it right there. So that's three different ways that you can bold, italic, and underline. All right, next thing we're going to do is justify. So we're actually going to do Control A, which highlights the entire document all at once. And we're going to do three things with it this way. First, I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to type in. Now, you can do a search. In my lab, I have a ton of fonts. I love to download lots of fonts. So I don't like to look for a font when I have so many. So you can just type it in, A-R-I-A-L space N, and that should bring it up. Arial narrow changes your font. And then the size is going to be size 10. Again, you can pull it down if you want, but generally I type it in. It's kind of up to you. And now we've got a much smaller font. Now before you click and lose that you've got everything highlighted, we're going to justify. So there are four different types of justification here. You can do left, which is what it's at now. Center centers it. Right puts it on the right. But the one we want is this one. In the old days, they called this full justify, which I actually liked that term better than just plain justify. But this one's called justify. And what it does is it makes it newspaper columns. So if I click on the left, see how it looks? And when I click on this one, it's now even on both sides. It's not very obvious right now that it made a change. But in a few minutes, when we put this in columns, it'll be very obvious that we changed the justification. Okay, so now that you've done that, you can click. You don't need to have it uh, highlighted anymore. And then next, I want you to scroll down again and go to uh, right above where it says Society of Women Engineers that we underlined. Right above that is Scholarship Opportunities. I want you to highlight that. You're going to make it size 14. You're going to bold it. And then you're going to choose a color for it. So this little A, pick a color that goes with it. 
Okay, avoid, a lot of kids get confused and they click on this. This is a highlighter. I never, ever use this. Don't use this one. Make sure you're using the A to color the words themselves. Okay. All right, so now we're going to use Format Painter. First, we're going to highlight fastest growing jobs in America. And we're going to do a couple of formatting things to it. We're going to make it size 12. We're going to bold it. We're going to change the background color. So you want to click on this one, the, the bucket. Again, don't do this one. A lot of kids think this is the same thing. It's not. Go to the paint bucket. You can pick a color for the background. And then I want to change the words to white. Okay. So the A right here to white. So you want to pick a background color that's dark enough that, that the white shows through. Okay. So this is called a subtitle. And there are four of them in this assignment. I want them all to look the same. So I'm going to, instead of going through all those steps again, I'm going to do what's called Format Painter, which is a lot like copying and pasting. Um, when you copy and paste, what's the first thing you have to do? Well, before you do Control C, you have to highlight it and say, this is what I want to copy, right? So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to highlight it. And instead of clicking Copy, though, we're going to click Format Painter. Now, notice it stays pushed in, and my cursor turns into a little paintbrush. So I'm going to come down here and make sure you start right at the beginning of the sentence. This month's success story, I drag across, and it copies the formatting. Now, it only has one shot. It'll do it once. So if you want to do career jokes, you need to dip your brush again and do it again. The other option is when you highlight this to double click on Format Painter. And what that does is it keeps it down. You can just keep highlighting and get them all and then turn it off when you're done. Okay. So you should have four this month's success story, career uh, jokes, and then do you, uh, do you know your pathway. Now, what if you make a mistake? What if you're like, oh, stink, I just did the whole thing. Okay. Well, control Z to undo your problem. And then this is where kids get messed up. They click on Format Painter again right away. We don't want to do that because look what you have highlighted. So you want to make sure you re-highlight and then do your Format Painter to do the next thing, okay, if you need to keep going. Okay, so that's the Format Painter. It's a little tricky, but I use it all the time for a lot of different things. Okay, now we're going to do a, what's called a horizontal line. So you're going to put your cursor in this blank line right here, and you're going to come up, make sure you're on your home ribbon, and there's a little picture of a window here. Now don't click on it the picture of a window, I want you to click on the button next to it and choose horizontal line. Okay? Then you're going to come down here and do it again. I'm going to tell you a little trick. There's a function key. If you look at the top of your keyboard, all the F keys at the top, the F4 key, uh, function key will always repeat whatever the last thing you did was. So you could actually click here and push F4 and it will just repeat it. So it saves you a little step. I use this quite a bit. So that's just a little thing. You don't have to do it. If you want, you can go back up here and do horizontal line whatever works. Okay, once we finish that, we're now going to, and make sure you have five, by the way, you do, you do do one after marriage and family therapists, okay? Now, this next one is adding bullets. I'm going to come down here to career jokes. You're going to highlight all the jokes and ending with there's no future in it. And all you have to do on your home ribbon is click the bullets button, just like that. Super easy. Now we're going to do find and replace. If, now make sure you unclick. Some of you will have trouble because if you're highlighted during this next section, you're going to do a couple extra clicks and it will confuse you. So make sure you click off. It doesn't really matter where. And I'm going to come over here. I'm on my home ribbon to replace. And I'm going to type in the names. I've already done it before. Kayla, okay, because that's the name right here. If you don't know how to spell it, it's right here in this month's success story. We're going to change Kayla's name. So you can change it to whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to change mine to Melissa, okay? And then you click Replace All, click OK, and now her name has been replaced by Melissa. And some kids are like, oh, that's cool, I want to do it again. So if you want to do last name, change Fisk to something else, fine, I don't really care. Okay, so we went ahead, we changed, we changed her name, awesome. And that's Find and Replace, and it will do that with anything. If it's a thousand page document and you want to change a word, you can do the entire document. It doesn't matter how long it is, okay? All right, we're going to go ahead and make a big change now to the front. We're going to go to the very top. Very important that you put your cursor in the right spot. Go in front of the word we and press enter 10 times. Okay, so we've got, we've got a big open space here. And we're going to create um, a title. And I want to actually show you what the title looks like. These are the directions, that, the written directions. But we're going to create this right here. Okay, and that may look, oh, that looks really tricky, but it's really not. If you've done PowerPoint before, this should be even easier. So I'm going to go to insert. And I'm going to do shapes, and we're going to pick this little triangle or this rectangle shape right here. And make sure you don't start over here or you'll lose it. You want to start right on the edge, and we're going to draw a rectangle shape. Now, if you're lazy, you can just leave it like that. But I like to make mine a little fancy, so I'm going to come up here. Make sure your drawing tools is on. It won't show up unless you've clicked on the actual shape. So on drawing tools, you're going to go to shape fill, pick a color, 
And then I personally, and I hate blue. I, I don't like that shade of blue. Um, personally, I always, I hate, I hate the border. I always take the border off. So you can go to shape outline and do no outline. So you can remove your border. You're welcome to go to shape effects. You know, I like to bevel mine, make it look kind of cool. Or you could go to shape fill, put a gradient on it or, or a texture. If you've done PowerPoint, you'll kind of know how those all work. Or you can just leave it solid. It doesn't matter. Okay, once you have it and you know that's exactly what you want, I'm going to make mine just a little bit bigger so it goes off the page. You're going to copy it, so highlight it and do control C, or you can right click and do copy, and then control V to paste, or right click and paste, okay, this one, and, or again, you could do it here, copy and paste, and I'm going to pull this down right here. Now, we want it to be at about just under one inch. Don't make it too big, or else it's going to come back to bite you later. So I, the, that's why we turned our ruler on. Here's the one. You could go a little bit below it if you want, but don't be all the way down here, okay, otherwise it might not fit. So I'm going to stick it about right here. And I can get rid of these enters if I want. I just went in here and press delete. Not backspace. Make sure you know the difference between delete and backspace. Delete. If I have writing, okay, and I push backspace, it'll go behind my cursor. If I do delete, it will delete what's in front of my cursor. A lot of kids don't know the difference between delete and backspace. Sometimes they're interchangeable, but a lot of times they're not. All right, next we're going to do Word. We want to type words in here, but I don't want to just type it because I don't have a lot of control over where it's going to go. So I'm going to go to Insert and do Word Art. And what that does is it makes my text a graphic. It makes it an image that I can move around. So I'm just going to click on one of them. I don't really care which. And I'm going to type Career. I'm going to do mine in all cap. And do it all one word, okay? And mine's italicized already. And the reason for that is because this was italicized. So it, it italicized everything above it. So I don't want career to be italicized. I'm going to highlight that word. And I'm just going to do control I and unitalicize it. So you, don't, you can italicize the whole thing. You can keep it italicized. But in the example, you've got it. This is normal. And then search is, is italicized. So I'm going to highlight that. And I'm going to change the size. Notice this little thingy comes up right here. So I'm going to change that to size 36. No, 48. Change it to 48. Okay. Now, because it's an image, it's very easy to kind of move it around wherever I want it. If you want to change your shape color, like shape fill would change the background color. Personally, I like to leave it the way it is. So I come over here to text fill, and I can change what color the text is. Maybe I want search to be a different color. You know, you can do whatever you want. You can go as simple or as complex as you want to go. Okay. And you can also do your text outline a different color or something. So if you want to mess with that, text effects. You know, you can. I wouldn't do anything like this. That's a little crazy, but I'm going to do like a bevel and, you know, just make mine look kind of cool. Okay. So now that I've got my title in, I'm going to go to insert shape again and do another rectangle and I'm going to click and draw like this. The other option is to copy and paste this one and then just resize it so that it's kind of the same. So either one of those works. Okay. If you, um, you want it to be about this size, like this. Okay. If you do the draw one, let me show you what that looks like. So I'll do one drawing and one copying and pasting so you can see both. So I'm going to draw that right there. Okay. And then you can come up here to shape fill and change it, whatever, how you want. I'm going to take this one. I'm just going to copy it, control C, control V, and put this one on the other side. Now we're going to type some stuff in here. This one's going to be volume number. So you just click on it and start typing. You don't have to double click. You just start typing. And the volume in the example is, uh, I think it's 234, but it really doesn't matter what number you put in there. And then on this side, I'm going to type April 2016 or whatever month and year it is when you're doing this. Right now it's April 2016, so I'm putting that in there. Okay, so now we've got a really awesome title ready to go and done. All right, next we're going to move on to columns. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight, very important you highlight the right area. I'm going to start with fastest growing jobs in America. I'm going to highlight this whole section right here, including my, my final uh, horizontal line. Okay. Don't go any farther than that. And I'm going to go to page layout, columns, more columns. And there are three things I'm going to do while I'm in this uh, menu. I'm going to click on three to make it three columns long. I'm going to choose line between. And I'm going to change my spacing to 0.2 to make it less space in between. And when I click OK, I get that, okay, which looks way cooler, okay? So now you're going to start to see a little bit how we're going to make this whole thing fit on one page. All right, we're now going to go mess with scholarship opportunities. It looks a little different than everything else, and now you're going to see why. I'm going to highlight um, everything except scholarship opportunities, all the actual scholarships, and it's going to take me onto another page and stop there. Go to Home, change the font to size 8. 
okay so I just made it a lot smaller okay okay and then it's very important right now that you unclick you don't want to have anything highlighted for this next section it doesn't really matter where your cursor is but don't have anything highlighted you're gonna to go to insert text box and then I'm gonna just choose a simple one and what a text box does is allows me to make my text floating I can put stuff in it I can put it wherever I want and I can move it around okay so what I'm gonna do is I've got my little text box I'm gonna kind of make it a little bit bigger I'm gonna highlight everything in scholarship opportunities including the title and I'm gonna cut it so control X I just cut it out so you might kind of freak out for a minute that disappeared okay that's okay put your cursor right on top of your text box and now paste it control V and all I have to do now is resize it to get it to fit okay so I want it to be about there and if you do it correctly it should be right underneath this month's success story so like that okay and I'm gonna make mine a little bit thinner so that it takes up some space but you want to have this line go all the way across and everything fits inside that box okay, so you can make this box any size you want in the directions it tells you to keep it at about 4.5 which is about right here so I, I made mine a little thinner than that but it, it's it's fine it doesn't matter whatever you want to do but it should be about right there whatever okay uh, and then we're gonna change the color of it so click on it again make sure you've got it highlighted go to drawing tools and then shape fill just go pick and I would pick a light color okay so that you can see all your writing in it and that just made it um, another shade different I could also maybe line that up so okay next thing we're gonna do is come over here where it says meet Melissa Fisk or whatever name you picked put your cursor in front of the word meet and you're going to go to insert picture in the files where you got your stuff where you got your starter there's an image in here we're gonna go ahead and click on that it's actually my niece so it was nice of her to let us use her picture so I pull that in okay and I'm gonna come over here to wrap text and change it to tight and that's probably one of the biggest things that kids have to learn is how to do that right now it, tre it treats the picture like it's part of the sentence so it leaves this big ex empty space so if we either right click and go to wrap text we can click on this if you're in 2013 you can click on this and change it to tight or you can come up here either way but if you change it to tight what it does is all the text now moves around it okay I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller so that my career jokes doesn't get cut into and now it looks like that okay all right we're almost done we just have a couple more things and we'll be finished so I'm gonna come down here to the do you know your pathway section and we're gonna put these into tabs so we're gonna highlight all these pathways and right now they're going on to two pages so you might have to scroll down to get your second page and we're going to go to your ruler here okay and we want to set our tabs from this ruler so one is at the 1.2 mark so I'm gonna to go to one I'm gonna count two over 1.2 and the other one is at the three inch mark so I'm gonna click on the three just like that okay all right now that I've done that this might be a little tricky but you've set some tabs you told the the, the the word that you want a tab here and a tab here so we're gonna to come to the word agriculture put your cursor at the end of the word agriculture and press delete not backspace make sure you press delete then press tab and it just set my tab in so now the second one is set up in front of this little one then I'm gonna to go to the end of the word science press delete press tab Okay, same thing over here with business delete tab and I just push the word the end button to get to the end delete tab okay come down marketing delete tab and you are good to go you now have everything uh, formatted correctly okay okay now once I've done that I'm done the same it's finished if you haven't been doing controls s throughout the document you may want to do that now control s to save it and then you're ready to print print according to your teachers directions which printer they want you to print and make sure that you did put your header on your footer on it so you have a name and you are good to go just look at what you've created you've just made something you probably if you'd seen this beforehand and I said you're gonna make this you might have gotten a little overwhelmed you just learned a lot of basics in word that the average person does not know so uh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and you know a lot more about Microsoft Word thank you for joining me